Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a house plant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In this episode, I'm going to be doing a lot of plant care stuff that I've been procrastinating over the last few months. I've been traveling and I got back and then I'm having COVID now. I've been having it for about five days now. So I let the girls have some time off. So I'm pretty much alone in the house. It's quite peaceful. There's some renovation noise going around. But yeah, these plant chores are actually very, very important to me. And we're gonna be looking at some of these plants that I brought on this table, but we're gonna be go going around the house doing other kinds of plant care. This is not really for beginners, but check out my old videos if you wanna see some more beginner type plant care. There's gonna be some repotting, there's gonna be some propagations. There's gonna be a lot of like troubleshooting and things like that, so stick around. This is a Syngonium milk confetti. I've got one behind that plant over there on the green wall, it's much larger, but this one's a propagate. But as you can see here, this has grown out of its like pot. It's too small for the pot and some of the newer leaves are becoming a little bit slow and crinkled. So I'm gonna give it a sl just a one size larger pot and be mindful when you give them a larger pot, you do wanna water them. Why is this not in focus? Hang on. All right, maybe I'm in focus now. <laughs> Sorry about that. So yeah, I put it in a so uh, pot one size bigger and usually I like to do this when the girls are around, but again, I'm having COVID now. Because when I do these things, I want them to see the changes that I've done. For example, this right here, after I repotted this into a new bigger pot, I do not want to overwater this. I want to water this a little bit less to make sure that it dries out quite a bit between watering because now I think it's holding on to almost twice as much water. So I don't know, I'm probably gonna relay this to the girls to make sure that they get the watering right. It's essential, it's actually life and death situation for these plants. But this is one that I don't know, I might let go soon. I have a bigger one, as I mentioned earlier on the green wall, and I can't say that this is a plant that I'm in love with, it's cute. Uh, but yeah, I got this from a plant swap and then I might let this go soon, either as a gift, as a swap. And I do owe some plants because in my export video, I did, some of the plants did fail to export and I promised that I will be giving them replacement. So this will be one of the options. Now I did add a little bit of slow release fertilizer here. And I just want to mention that the amount of fertilizer depends on the pot size, but also in a plastic pot situation, you want to give them less fertilizer. But if you put them in terracotta, you do want to give them more fertilizer. This is something that I've never mentioned in the channel before because with terracotta pots, the terracotta itself will absorb some of the nutrients for it. But this is actually carboforan. The name's gonna be on the screen. It's a chemical pesticide. I use less of it these days. I don't really have any pest infestation. I wish to get off this chemical pesticide at some point in the future, but I have not yet because I still have a pretty unmanageable collection. But there you go. Next up, we have this beautiful aglonema. Lotus Delight, sorry. I had like three glasses of wine before this. So I'm a little bit blank in my mind. Actually, this is still a decent pot size for it. It's not really that root bound yet. It's not, but this media is a little bit wet. And as you can see, some roots are already peeking out from above here. And I do want to bury that in there in some media in case I want this to root into the media so that it'll grow faster. But as you can see, some of the older leaves are still here. And this is what the new leaves look like. This is like a beautiful agonima from Sir Greg Humbali. And I think I might actually move this into a terracotta pot that is larger so that it doesn't get overwatered because I have overwatered its siblings when I was propagating this. I'm gonna link that video up above. Aglonemas hate water and I'm an overwaterer. All right, so I did find a pot here that is, I think, a perfect size for it. And usually for aglonemas, I wanna give it like a forest floor potting mix. I might not wanna fill this all the way in with media, maybe not yet, because again, I'm an overwater. It's better to underwater aglonemas than to overwater it. But I did wanna cover that little bit of aerial root that we saw earlier in this medium so that it can turn to real roots. And then maybe in a few months time, especially as this will get compacted, it will actually lower over time. I can add more media later. When in doubt, don't use as much media. I added only this much media into this pot and then you can always add it later. It's difficult to subtract media, but it's actually easy to add later on. Uh, I'm gonna add a more generous amount of fertilizer here because this is a terracotta pot. So the pot does sort of absorb the nutrients and disperse it. 
unlike a plastic pot where the fertilizer is a little bit more confined to the pot. There we go, it looks much better now because this plant was actually like falling in the small pot. It has such a lot of foliage. When I water it, sometimes it would just topple over. So happy with this setup now. Next up here, we've got this Piper. I believe this is called the Piper. Ah, I forgot the name, but this got this red back. All right, so the name did escape me for now. Too much wine, I'm not even gonna bother, but the name's gonna be on the screen. But as you can see, I've been water propagating this for a few months now. Now, this is not an easy piper to care for. A lot of them actually ooh, dropped one. Too much wine, I tell you, too much wine. So this piper is difficult to care for. I'm gonna show you some b-rolls of some of the other ones that I've grown. They did have curling leaves. I think this is one that really likes a bit more humidity. And it does have these like white, almost like water droplets on its back. I did notice this in some of my Lea Amabilis as well. Comment down below if you know what these dews stand for, what they mean, but they're not pests if I'm not wrong. But the way they propagate it, you can cut single nodes. As you can see, this is actually a cutting. It's rooted and it's putting out a new vine. Let me show you another one. I may do a proper propagation video on this someday, but this is also propagation. This is a new vine that came out of it, but the cutting is basically this right here. So it's put out some roots and it's been here for about a few months. Now this, this is actually the parent plant where it comes from. Part of the sign, this is not a sylvaticum, that's something else. But this is a whole new piper. Look at how cute the new leaf is. So when you propagate the, the plant itself, it will put out some beautiful new vine because the old vine here was actually struggling. It curled up really badly. So I'm surprised that all the cuttings actually took from this parent plant. So now I think it is time to pot this up. Now, keep in mind, this is actually a very thirsty plant. I've noticed that they do require quite a bit of watering, but you can actually overwater these. I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to pot these up in uh, two of these cuttings in, in forest floor potting mix and two of the cuttings in sphagnum moss. And call it a hunch, but because of these wonderful red backs, I think this is a plant that doesn't appreciate too high of a light and that is one of my problems i might have given it bright indirect light maybe this is what it doesn't like the leaves actually did bleach quite a bit for me as you can see here the leaves are a little bit bleached yellow so maybe this is like a medium indirect light loving plant so what i'm gonna do is to water this plant i'm gonna use the same water that it was propagated in this is actually very good for them because they're used to the same ph value there's a bit of rooting hormone in there that they actually naturally put out so when you water propagate a plant, don't throw all that water goodness out. Use it to water your plant. It will really, really appreciate it. Now, when you first move it into like a potting medium, you don't wanna keep it too dry because it's used to like water. So it's got like pretty much like water roots. So yeah, don't let it dry out for too much in the beginning. Look at the beautiful red backs on these though. This is quite a beautiful plant. It's got a velvety finish, which means it might like a bit of humidity. Philodendron white knight. It's becoming rather large. And this is a plant that I might actually let, let it get quite big. Look at all these beautiful roots in there. Look at all this root porn. Yeah, I forgot to warn in the introduction of this episode that there's gonna be some wonderful root porn in this episode. And while the leaves are not wonderfully variegated, the stem is, look at that, beautiful variegation around the stem. This is a really, really good potential for a lot of variegation in the future. I might actually set this one free up on my green wall. Oh my gosh, I'm, dro I'm dropping things everywhere. Oh my gosh. I am a clumsy person, just so you know. Let me lower this down. Okay, so this is one pot size bigger than before, and let me show you what that looks like. And this means that this area root is probably gonna be buried in the new potting mix and turn into regular roots. And as usual, I pot these philodendrons up in my aeroid potting mix. And there we go. It's made with cocoa chips, perlite, burnt rice hull, and some horticultural charcoal. And they love it. This epiphytes, because it's got such chunky nature, it fools the roots into thinking that it's climbing up the canopy and this means that it's gonna invest in s some spectacular mature leaves because these plants they do want to clamber up to a higher elevation in nature to like, access more light and then these guys actually do flower and they can fruit at some point not that that's my oh my gosh i keep dropping okay i'm gonna work on this anthurium next because it keeps falling over 
So, <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work on you uh, next. Oh my God, they're just so impatient. Be patient, you guys. You guys are gonna get worked on next. So yeah, there you go. And then I'm gonna set this like on the wall behind me. I'm gonna pin it somewhere. There's like a whole negative space here that I think would probably benefit from having a plant. Right around here, I think. Okay, all right, and it's done. I'm waiting for this begonia to kind of grow in size a little bit. And waiting for this area, I don't know if I'm in frame. Sorry, I'm not. Waiting for this lower area, this will fill out too because some of the plants below that will take over. Just so you have an idea, that's where we put the plant earlier on. So this area here, I'm expecting it to fill out and cover that pot over there. All right, we're gonna work on these very rowdy Anthurium clavigerum. I've got two of these and they're just going to be repotted to a larger pot, but I need to be mindful of watering because I don't want, this, if this doesn't have a lot of roots, but this is already like trying to find something to climb onto. All right, I believe this is a pretty good arrangement here, but hang on, let me find a moss pole before that. Okay, I'm gonna stick that here and then potting media goes around it. Oh, that felt really good. I've been meaning to do this for a while, for like two, three months, and I finally got around to do this. I'm happy for that. A lot of you ask like, how do I prevent this moss pole from toppling over? You just gotta kind of jam pack it a little bit. There's like a bit of cocoa chips here and there, and you just wanna make sure that it's secured in place. And now it's like, it's not really like falling over. These plants, they become really beautiful by the way as they reach like a mature size leaf. Now someone did DM me because they wanted to buy this cutting, but they didn't respond back. So yeah, I'm gonna keep <laughs> this cutting for myself for now. I'm not gonna tie this to the pole because there's not a lot to tie them into for now. Wait for a few growth points to come in and then I will probably tie this up more tricky later on. So stick around. But this is an anthurium, I'm not sure because the ID faded away. I'm not sure of the species, but let me check the roots to see if this is in need of repotting. Yeah, I think I would benefit from like one pot size bigger. Yeah, and this came off too. I'm not sure what anthurium this is. If you happen to know, feel free to shout it out. I really wouldn't mind it if you can know what this is. Again, anthuriums, I would give them a very chunky aeroid potting mix. By the way, I did mention that in my last few videos that my Anthuriums are, have been struggling in my old accommodation where I rented the house because it was rained on every day. I'm happy and proud to say that they have now rehabbed and this was actually a stump a few months ago when I moved into this house. So I've been keeping an eye out for my anthuriums. We've been keeping them away from the rain, better control of watering, and this is doing really well. So I don't know what species this is. Let me give you a close up look. It's probably a hybrid maybe some papillilaminum in it because it's a popular hybrid in Indonesia. But here's what I'm gonna do with anthuriums as well. I'm going to be giving it a top dress of moss because as you can see here, they do put out these wonderful roots around here. And if you top dress them with moss, they really love it. They love it. The aerial roots will actually turn into regular soil roots. And then this also seals in the humidity within the chunky potting media. But you do want to make sure that this dries out. You don't want to have the media be very wet inside. Do you know what I mean? So you want to keep the moss sort of humid and wet. This is going to apply to all the anthuriums we're going to be working on today. Um, keep the media, sorry, the sphagnum moss on top a little bit humid and wet, but keep the inside, the media inside the chunky aeroid potting mix, keep it dry. That is my tip for you guys. So water it lightly, often, only keeping the top humid. And some of that humidity will actually trickle down to the chunkiness below because the anthuriums, as you see be before, they, are, they have thick roots and they're very, very intolerant to overwatering. All right, let's check out this anthurium maroon pea. It's luxuriance crossed with papillilaminum. It's from Mr. Eddie Pranoto. It's a gift. Thank you so much. I will cherish this for the rest of my life. He's gifted me so many anthuriums. I really appreciate it. And this is something that I will never sell. I would never share with other people. I would let it grow big and it'll be a story that will live with me forever. So thank you, Eddie. Uh, this is still quite okay in there. 
But let me see. I guess I will move this to one size larger pot because I don't want to deal with the repotting in the next six months or so for this plant. All right, so I'm moving this into like a size larger pot. And yeah, this is like also another plant that basically came back into a stump. It died back and then now it's surviving. All my anthuriums kind of died back at some point. So I'm really happy that I've got my anthurium care down. For this anthurium, let me see. I do want to top dress this with oh, not as much moss as the anthurium that we saw before, but just a little bit because as you can see here, some of the aerial roots here are peeking out a bit. And this is probably good for another six months without another repotting. Look at that new leaf come in, it's beautiful. Thank you, Eddie, for this plant. Now, this is a Anthurium SP Limon from Mr. Chandra. Thank you so much for this gift. Beautiful plant. This is the smaller version. I've got one growing on a green wall that is doing really well. We're going to tackle that in a bit. A moss pole that it really deserves because this is such a beautiful plant. Now, I haven't been giving moss poles to my plants for a while, but I did watch Sydney Plant Guy's videos oh my gosh if you haven't checked out his channel please do he's really really well known for growing large aeroids on moss poles inside like i think it's an apartment setting so a lot of you probably can relate to his growing conditions and he's so articulate about plant care stuff and he's so passionate i don't know i have a lot of respect for him but the reason why i haven't done any moss poles is because i have all this green wall behind me that is covered in cocoa fiber that i'm letting my aeroids grow into because i really don't have a lot of indoor space anymore to grow plants vertically look at how beautiful this is they become like a beautiful large trilobe leaf when they become mature all right as i was arranging upstairs i was putting some plants back i noticed that these two decided to have an affair this is a philodendron birkin and this is a martianum on the right and the roots this has put its roots into the next pot let me try to separate it but also this plant i think would benefit from a repotting this can get absolutely massive by the way the philodendron martianum are also known as the philodendron fat boy and it's time to let me see whose roots are going in where hang on maybe sorry i thought that i had it wrong so hang on Whose roots went into whose pot? I think it was this Martianum. Yeah, his roots went into the Birkin. I thought it was the other way around. This is crazy. Okay. Oh, that was a, a really good separation. I might actually plant this directly into a terracotta pot because the Martianum, I have a feeling, is one that really wants to dry out. And I can feel it's actually not that thick and fat as before. I think it was probably underwatered. So yeah, I'm gonna move this into a larger pot that is terracotta, but hang on, if I move this here, I'm gonna have a hard time. But you know what? That's a problem for later on because this pot is actually narrow on the top. So I might have a hard time repotting this later, but you know what? For now, it looks good like this. I'm just gonna deal with this now because we've got like a couple more plants to work with and this video is gonna turn into like an hour long epic, epic video. So we don't want that. These days with like the end of COVID, with people traveling, with people going back to work and like picking up new hobbies, I think people are not really hanging around for longer videos. Because by the way, when people don't watch videos all the way to the very end, YouTube kind of punishes you with like the algorithm. So for those of you who watch my videos all the way to the very end, thank you so much. It means a lot, especially in these like trying times where like, I don't know, plant YouTubing is becoming a little bit hard. My income has fallen quite a bit. Sorry, I'm a little bit tipsy, so I'm oversharing a bit. Uh, terracotta pot, so I'm gonna be giving more fertilizer than my plastic pot counterparts. But yeah, plant YouTubing is pretty cruel these days. Um, I'm getting more views obviously as the channel is growing, but I'm getting less and less income. Advertisers are not paying for as much and people are not staying as long for videos. So th thank you so much for sticking around. But look at how beautiful this plant is. I do need to give this like a water watering because it's probably very thirsty now. There you go. I do water this every day because it's like a lot of leaves, a lot of stem to feed, and it's also very, very airy right now. All right, we're on a roll now. And here's a difficult decision that I need to make 
So this is the leaf that we propagated it with, with like a, a little bit of a stem, and the stem has sprouted this new plant. But as you can see, the shape here is not sexy, it's a little bit weird. And this was like hitting other plants, or like there might be other plants underneath this leaf. So I'm gonna do the hard thing off. This is gonna be hard for you guys to watch. Look away, look away now. Okay. Mm so I'm gonna cut this leaf off. It's like also old and it's turning a bit yellow. That happens to old leaves, by the way. And thank you so much because this leaf has given me this whole new plant. So always be grateful for your plants. And a little bit of this stump here is fine. I would cut it closer if possible, but this will actually dry off and it'll fall off later on its own. But yeah, and that's actually, I don't need to repot this because this is still a good size for this plant. So I might add a bit of fertilizing just because it's got more leaves going on now. But with moss, I gotta be careful. They do retain a bit of moisture. They can compact over time. But look at how neat and compact this is now. In fact, this is how they're propagated commercially. So please don't hate me for cutting off that one leaf that we propagated with. I'm very grateful for that one leaf. But this is how they're sold, how they're grown, and this is how they're happy. Uh, moving forward. All right, this table is getting less and less cluttered. I saved some of the larger plants for later, but this is a Diefenbachia. And look at how leggy the plants are here. And I should be wearing a glove as I work with this, but I, I can't be bothered to because I'm drunk. So I'm gonna be careful not to touch any of the cut ends, but I'm gonna show you a B-roll of what like a, a beautiful bed of Diefenbachia looks like. They can, this can get like pretty large leaves, but I do like them to be bushy and like a statement piece. And this is not what I want, like leggy long pieces. It's same with Diefenbachias. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just cut this, cut this off, stick it right back in. And I'm gonna cut this off. I'm gonna try to cut it at different levels so that they, because when you cut, they will branch out one or two vines, like new vines coming out of it. And I don't want them to be like in a similar level. So I might keep some vines a bit higher up. Like for example, this one, I might keep it a bit higher up. And all these, these will turn into aerial roots. I might wanna take some of the sheets off because they can rot. Stick it right back in. And then this one, Take this off, take some of the sheets off, and then stick it right back in there. There you go, now we have like a nice compact pot. And not only that, those top cuttings will not only take off, but these, these cuttings, they will sprout new branches. Usually it's two vines, sometimes it is three. So wish me luck on this, and look at how beautiful they are. These Bacchias are a beautiful plant that's like a statement piece, easy to care for, very forgiving, very good for beginners. And I do recommend to grow them like in a massive bushy pot like this because they do provide that pop of color. Or you can just grow like a single vine and let it size up into like an indoor tree. It's up to you. Now this here, this is the Philodendron Anderson. It's lost a lot of variegation actually. I'm not very happy about that. <laughs> look at this one particular aerial root here. It's super cute. What I'm gonna do, look at that. I procrastinated, I showed this in my house plant. Sorry, not house plant, I'm drunk. My, uh, I can't remember what video this is, but I showed this plant and I meant to pot this up a few moons ago and I didn't go around to do that. So I'm gonna do that today. This is a pretty easy plant to care for, so I'm gonna use like a used pot. It's okay to recycle some of the media as long as you know that there's no pest or fungal infections and the new leaves are a little bit compromised here because I think it was just not getting enough nutrients. There was no nutrient in the water at all. It was getting medium in direct light for the last few months. I'm gonna let this grow up a bit bigger and then I'm gonna chop this up because this is how you can get better variegation. It's when you chop these plants up and then like let them do a beauty contest because not all of them will start giving you this beautiful variegation. And I'm gonna look at the stem as well. Yeah, I don't see any beautiful variegation around here, so the chances are quite low that this is going to give me a variegated cutting. But these guys are so cheap these days, you guys. It's like so inexpensive. I don't mind just buying a new one. But I'm not giving, the, giving up on this one just yet. It's given me lots and lots of beautiful babies that are now living abroad. Very proud of that. For those of you who bought plants from me during my closing down sale, thank you so much. You've really contributed a lot to me for this channel because 
those money, I, I don't really want to talk about money too much in this channel, but I'm drunk, so I'm allowed to. But a lot of that money is going to the house renovation. So that really enabled me to live comfortably moving forward. Thank you so much. But I'm, by the way, I'm no longer selling plants. So for those of you asking, not you can't really buy plants from me anymore. So there you go. I'm, all of these are pretty much for my personal collection. Oh, and again, because this is a water propagate, I want to use the same water to water this generously. Get it nice and soaking right in there. Because this plant was used to living in water. Keep that in mind. You don't want to let this dry out suddenly. You want to let this dry out over the course of the next few months. Or let's tackle some of these anthuriums because it's an easy no-brainer. So this is a... Oh my god, it's putting out a spadex. And it's like something's on here. Did it like... I don't know. Did it like pollinate? I don't know. Anyways, this is a anthurium forgetii or like an anthurium forgetii if you like from I don't know, Italian or like Latin speaking countries because that's the right way to pronounce it. A lot of people have laughed to me about like calling it, calling like when, when a plant has two eyes, you call it like EI. That's like an American thing apparently and I don't mind it. Oh, I tore the leaf. I'm sorry I tore the new leaf. But for this, I might keep this only because I'm curious to see what this is going to become. There's a little nub here that, I don't know. But this is like in the female stage, I think. Or not yet, I don't know. Normally it's like the, f I'm too drunk to remember now. It's usually the, the female portion first when it's sticky and it becomes a pollen. But I'm not even aware because this plant wasn't doing so well before. I think it was getting way too much light before. Uh, so as you can see the new, the old leaves, they're a little bit bleached. So I move it like to a lower shelf and it's been doing well since. And again, apparently it's flowering now. That's pretty freaking amazing. If we're possible, I want to add a little bit of slow release fertilizer to the moss. And one more here. It's also a no brainer here. And I think this pot size is actually good for this plant. I don't think it needs repotting. I'm not even going to disturb the roots by checking. But this one leaf here, the bottom one needs to go when it's like yellow like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it even happier by, as you, get, as you guessed it, I'm going to top dress this with moss so that the whole like stump area here retains some humidity and these roots can be redirected back down into the potting medium. But when you do that, you do want to make sure that the plant is uh, it's not overwatered because now it's going to be retaining a little bit more moisture than before. A bit of watering and then I'm gonna send this back to its original position. This is a, probably like a Magnificum hybrid, I'm guessing. I'm not sure, but look at how beautiful the veins are on these. I'll do an anthurium video soon, as, long as, as soon as these guys size up a bit. I will do an anthurium tour video. I have maybe like 20 anthuriums. So wow, I keep finding new plants that I need to work on. This is a variegated Monstera. Let me check on the roots. It's been a while since I checked on this, but I think it's really grabbed onto the pot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like give it a bit of a lubricant action here. Let it loosen up a bit and try to take this off. Wow, okay. It's ready for a repotting. This gorgeous, gorgeous variegated monster. Look at this amazing variegation on this plant. All right, so one of these is going to my business partner. It belongs to her, I promised that for her housewarming. So I'm gonna give this a moss pole. So it's a lot more manageable, oh, perfect. And then I'm gonna be burying some of these nodes. As you can see, there's some nodes and there's some aerial roots down to the side here. I'm gonna be burying all of that. And then back off with watering because this is going to retain water almost twice as much as before and then it's gonna take off hopefully it'll give me like fenestry with leaf by the time i gift it to her i meant to come over to her place but things like a lot of like stuff got in the way so i have not actually visited her new home she's not come to my home is as well we've been a bit out of touch over the holidays and now that i've covid i'm pretty much like locked in alone in my home and when i add so much potty medium and also a moss pole I am going to be giving it a generous amount of fertilizer. Quite a lot. Because the moss pole also does take in nutrients, believe it or not. 
and leave some near the moss pole. This is again advice that I've never shared with anyone, but it's been on the back of my mind. It makes sense, it's common sense. Plant care is not brain surgery, it's not rocket science. Everything makes sense. Just follow your instincts, use some intelligence, use some experience and watch a lot of my videos. And I'm gonna try to like reposition this a bit so that the back exactly aligns with the moss pole. Now it's aligned. You want it to like kind of be leaning against the pole perfectly like this. And so it will grab onto it, find it and climb up. For this next one, I'm a little bit worried because the new leaf is like predominantly variegated. But let me check the back of the patio. There. This means, uh, it's, since as you can see, it's growing to the right side, like that. So the next leaf is going to grow on the left side. So I want to check the back of the patio. But I'm going to check a little bit on the left side. So it's, as you can see here, this triangle here, this is a good sign that the next leaf is going to be pretty balanced in variegation because it's got some green on it on like slightly to the left but behind the patio. This is where the new leaf comes from. I have a whole video detailing this method of detecting it. If I can, I will insert that video up on, this, up on the screen so you can click on that. Oh, beautiful. This is what they like, by the way. They don't like it wet. So they like their media to just be a bit humid. Yeah, but it's time for a moss pole. So I'm gonna give it like a proper, proper moss pole now. And maybe a bigger pot. So this will do just fine. I'm having the best day ever, you guys. I've been meaning to do this for a while. I'm glad I got around to do this today. And I hope that you guys are doing well, everyone. Uh, 2023 is gonna be a very questionable year because last year was a dumpster fire. So we all need to work hard, be patient, be kind, be smart about our investments. Uh, there will probably be a recession. I know some people are against saying that because recessions are a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you believe in recession, it will happen. So a lot of people are trying to avoid that word, but I believe genuinely with the way things are going on with the world, with like overvaluation of businesses, with the fall of digital like businesses, like social media, Bitcoin. Sorry, I'm like ranting a bit. It's the wine talking. And also the war in Russia and a lot of uncertainty with the world right now with the geopolitical situations. Uh, we will see some changes. And that means that we have to be a bit careful financially, including myself. If you, if you have been spared, if you're doing well right now, my gosh, hats off to you. I'm really happy for you. But I'm pretty realistic that not everyone is doing well. I know that some people are, are not doing well. For some of you, I'm in the same boat. But we'll get out of this. Everything that comes up must come down. Everything that comes down will come up. All right, this next one is pretty easy. This is a philodendron mame. And it's like two vines growing opposite sides. So what I'm going to do is very simply just like to have it be dig a bit of a hole here to let it nest comfortably down i just want to guide this along and let it like kind of trail over to the side and back into the pot let it root back into the pot and let it encircle because a lot of these nodes here these will root right down below right back into the pot and this as well this might be a little bit of a challenge because it's very stiff. I hope I don't break it. But yeah, there you go. So just kind of guide it back down. It's a very simple fix to this. And this is not, not a pest prone plant, but I do want to give it a bit more nutrient because it is putting out quite a lot of leaves. And wish me luck. As you can see here now, it's like becoming this beautiful, I don't know what you call it, like yin yang, or you can call it like 69 if you're dirty minded. <laughs> but it's, it's curling back around itself. That's what I mean. So yeah, I might actually add a bit of media just so that more the roots can take into more surface area for it to root into. And I could water it a lot less frequently. But this has been living indoors. I might actually consider having this live outdoors for the time being just because Look at these like growth points here. I think it could benefit from just a bit more humidity and and better watering. So I might have this live like around here, around this table for now. 
just to until the new leaves unfurl and until the new roots take off. It's higher humidity here in this room where I'm working now. Now this next plant, I've been really struggling with this. The name is going to be on the screen. Sorry, it's too tall, so I can't really show the entire thing in frame. Beautiful leaves. I think it likes direct sunlight based on some Googling, but then it kept shedding leaves. So I don't know what's wrong. I kept this dry. I give this direct sunlight. Yellowing leaves that rapidly shed would suggest, uh, oh, uh, what do you call it? Root rot or overwatering. So let me check on the roots. It's actually very bone dry. So I'm going to do something drastic. There are probably very many nodes along this stem. I'm cut it. Cut it right off. And then this might branch off into something. And for this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut like a top, tippy top cutting. I might root this in water. Like, let's see what happens. Some of the, I may, I may even cut it shorter like this. And then for this stem, I'm just gonna throw this into my prop box just to get humidity and just to see if anything will sprout out of this. Just, I don't know, I have nothing to lose, so why not? Look at this cute tiny vessel that I found here. And usually with plants, I can see if this species is thirsty or not just by water propagation. Thirsty species such as the Fetonia tend to draw up a lot of water very quickly. So I'll be able to learn more about this plant by just putting it in a small vessel and observing how much water it takes in. All right, my phone is on low battery mode, so I'm gonna be fast. This is a Syngonium that I've been propagating in water for a very long time, but look at how beautiful the leaves are. And, ta-da, look at the roots. Oh my gosh. So, I think it is time to move it into soil. But for that to happen, I'm going to be doing a bit of propagation as well. So I'm gonna take this top cutting off because it is very long and leggy. I'm gonna take some of the cuttings off. This is a very easy plant to care for, so I'm not even like, I don't know, I'm not really even worried about this plant. It's going to take off. So I'm gonna take all these leaves off. This one I'm gonna take off as well. Keeping only one leaf with a few nodes in the lower portion. I'm not gonna untangle this because it's going to suffer if I untangle this. And then, let me see, I might put this into, I don't know, I have this pot just sitting around. Might as well just use it, right? Might as well. I don't know. I don't know how you like this look, but it's going to bush up quite a bit because all these cuts that we make, they will put out new vines. So these leaves are only temporary and we're really counting on the vines to give us a like, new plan. General purpose potting media because I don't want to water this every day. I want to be minimal with my plant care. So another tip is if you want your plant care to be very easy, you don't want to water them often, Give them like something that holds on to moisture, like give like a potting media that retains moisture quite a bit longer. So you can really kind of set and forget them quite a bit, such as in this case. I might give it a good cover pot once this has taken off. I might even like throw this out in like the rain because I think this Syngoniums, they are so tough. They can live in garbage. They can live in a garbage dump and survive. All right, next we have this begonia. I think I might cut this video short soon because my, again, my phone is low battery, but this is a begonia Arabian sunset. Gorgeous begonia. But like my gardener previously made a mistake of potting these two types of begonias. As you can see, these are two different varieties into the same pot. And I don't think I like it, well, not one bit. So I'm going to separate it. And begonias hate repotting, so I'm gonna be very gentle. And also this dries out way too fast. I know I have to water this every day. So yeah, I'm gonna try to repot this without substantially damaging the roots. Just breaking it up very quickly. Probably a little bit too quickly. But this, I, I might actually, hang on. I might actually just put this back into its own pot. I think this will do fine because there's like few cuttings, fewer cuttings in here. And I'm gonna do something later, just so you know. I'm gonna show you what I do with this begonia. All right, so I potted this one species up on its own. I think this is getting maybe a bit too much of a light because I remember the leaves used to be a lot darker than this. And it's got a red back. How beautiful is that? Look at that. Mm. So this is a begonia that might appreciate slightly lower light. But what I'm gonna do is, guess what I'm gonna do? Okay, I'm gonna cut this off. And I'm gonna just stick it back. Propagate single node cuttings. So each node looks like this. This is how I've been propagating them before. It's got like a main stem. Look at that little sharp point down the middle. 
that is where the new vine is going to come from. But I got to be very careful not to like forget watering this because they can dry out rather quickly. Just stick it in there. Let it bush out. Let it turn into like a huge plant. And for this one, this is the tippy top cutting. I might take off like a lower leaf because it's got too many leaves. It's going to try to retain all the leaves and it doesn't have the roots to do so and just stick it back in there. Now this, this can actually <laughs> potentially survive with begonias. I'm not, not going to do it this time, but just to show you, you could cut it in half possibly. And this here, you can stick it into soil and this might put out roots and some babies will appear. And the top portion here, if you stick it into soil, like this deep into soil, some babies may also appear around the vines. So I'm not gonna do it this time, or I may actually just throw this into a prop bin just to see what happens. But yeah, this, you could actually propagate begonias this way. Not sure about pink cane begonias, but regular begonias, you absolutely can. I'm gonna keep propagating. I really want a full bushy pot of this. I'm going very greedy with this particular plant. I'm gonna keep an eye out for this. The next few weeks is gonna be very crucial. I really need to make sure, especially the top portion here, where a lot of the cuttings are sitting and where it's going to dry out quite fast. Make sure that it's humid and consistently moist. And in this terracotta setting, it's very easy to let it dry out too much. For this one, you know what, for insurance, because it's like my last one of this plant, I'm gonna propagate this in water, just like these two cuttings. You can propagate begonias in water as well. They don't really take too well into the soil when you move them into soil, but they usually survive. This, it's like not the ideal condition. I find that for begonias, they do better when you stick them right into soil. Look at the mess that we made, it's crazy, but I'm really having a good time. So with this one, I'm just gonna plop this back into soil. And we do have one, I don't know if it's in frame, but we have, copies of this up on a green wall so i'm not that afraid of losing this because again begonias they're not so kind about repotting they really hate it absolutely hate it their roots are like super delicate and fragile if you ever like unpotted one before so you'll know that they really helps they really don't take too well to repotting but they're very easy to propagate. So if you're rehabbing a begonia, rather than figuring out how to repot it, like you bought it back from a store, it's better to just take some, like take the top cutting off and propagate it. It's much easier that way. You'll have much more success getting new plants out of this. For this one plant, this is the top cutting. Take one leaf off and then just like take the top cutting and stick it right back in back in the pot let it propagate and with the one leaf here you can also do that you can just stick it back comment down below if this works for cane begonias i have a feeling they do the apple doesn't fall far too far from the tree so you can do that with the rex begonias i can't think of a reason why you can't with this cane begonias very greedy with my propagation i do want like a massive pot of this this is how i've been propagating this for my store in the past so i'm very confident about this method. For those of you who are new, maybe take a few cuttings first. And this one, look at this big leaf. Take it off because this cutting has a much higher chance of survival without that leaf. Because keep in mind, the, the new cutting needs to put out roots. It needs to put out a new leaf instead of focusing its energy on. I really live, I'm quite violent with this propagation and somebody asked me a question in my q a like why do i propagate plants as if they did something wrong to me i don't know i'm just like a, quite maybe overconfidence it's one thing but maybe because i'm greedy like that look whole new bed of begonias let's see how these take off if you stay tuned to my channel you'll see these somewhere sometime in my plant tour collection. I'm not gonna do an update with this rescue video because it's already like so long. I was going to do some rescue around the area in the back and like my wall, but I'm gonna keep it for next time, you guys. And I do have one more plant, but I'm gonna do it off screen because this is too much for you guys already. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I really, really am confident about my rescue today. And I hope that you guys are doing well. And I hope that you guys took something out of this episode. 
and grow your collections beautifully, sustainably, and propagate and rescue. I know springtime is coming, so you guys will have a lot of chores ahead of you to do as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.